Before we get into this episode of questions from subscribers, I gotta give a huge, huge shout out uh, to the newest team, Keep It Clean patrons, uh, Jason E. G. and Phil B. Uh, appreciate y'all very, very much. And, and to get us started, let's go to their two questions. First one came from uh, Phil. He said, hey bro, love the content. I'm actually from Detroit, but became a Ravens fan when y'all drafted Lamar. Hey, I don't blame you, man. I don't blame you at all. Welcome aboard. You've been riding since 2018. So yeah, you done seen everything, man. Or oh, you done seen everything in the Lamar era. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. A whole lot of fun. And hopefully this season it gets even more fun and the Ravens, they decide, you know what? We just feel like winning it all. But anyway, he said, can't wait for the start of the season and all the haters and media to get proven wrong once again. God bless you, brother. Keep it rocking. Appreciate that, Phil. Thank you, man. Uh, and, and another, uh, the other patron uh, was Jason E.G. He said, new to the team, keep it clean. The video's been in my rotation for a while now. Respect and appreciate the takes and the content. Hashtag Team Gladdy. I, I like that. Hashtag Team Gladdy. I, I appreciate you, man. And, uh, and, and thank you. Thank you. Now he said that. <laughs> that part about it, he said, I appreciate the takes. Ooh. <laughs> they ain't for everybody, man. They ain't for everybody. And that's fine. That's fine. I, I, they don't need to be for everybody. Um, but again, like we always say, as long as we can have a nice conversation, because uh, we ain't always going to agree. And that's cool. That's cool. But as long as it's respect from me to you, from you to me, from, from us to each other, as long as it's respect, that's all that matters. So um, the next question uh, came from my guy Gareth, and appreciate you. Shout out to my guy Gareth C. Um, he said, hey, Graven, hope you and your family are having a great summer. Hey, we are. We are. It's been a lot of fun. It's been very, very busy, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, and now football season is here, and stuff is about to get ooh, super crazy. But anyway, he said, I'm just thinking. Likely balled out in the preseason. I think he's our number two tight end. Nick Boyle was playing a lot last night. Well, you obviously know when he sent his question in. Um, do you think the Ravens might be shopping him? I don't know. I would love your opinion and have a blessed day. Man, see, it's crazy because I was I was thinking about that same thing. We talked about it during the game, during the live stream. Because it's like, man, he was playing late. Like, Nick Boyle was playing late into the, the third and fourth quarter. And I was like, Ooh, this I don't know man um so likely I mean you, you know like again he's a tight end too so you know likely is going to get used he's going to be on that field uh, we talked about it in, in, a, in a previous video from like last week with how the Ravens they'll have these players that they really really like uh, and likely is one of them Travis Jones is another um so you and you know that just they will be on the field and they will definitely get used and Pepe is another one too um, so, but as far as Nick Boyle possibly being shopped, you never know in today's NFL, man. You never know. And I believe somebody explained to me his contract to where it's really not, um, that bad to move it. Uh, I would, uh, just all depends on the usage. But I would rather them keep it just for depth, for depth. But if, if they end up moving Nick Boyle, it'll be one of those things where it's sort of a shocker. But at the same time, because... Preseason tells a lot of if you got a Nick Boyle playing into like the third, fourth quarter of a preseason game. Seriously, like think about that. Nick Boyle, Nick Boyle playing to the, the third, fourth quarter of a preseason game. I don't know, man. We'll see. We 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 we're gonna see. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised uh, if something does happen with him. Um, but Ravens like that's why they read up at tight end like they did. Likely. Charlie, Kyler, um, they still got Josh Oliver for now. And with depending on Charlie Kyler, he could keep Josh Oliver on the roster, depending on how long it's going to take for him to get back. Um, so we'll see. But I don't, I don't even know what to think of that. I don't know what to think of that. But in my opinion, it just it really doesn't look good. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Ain't you no know chance for the me. You see my boy, he like got a man. Next question came from my guy Enonic. He said, Lamar's next stop. 
Yikes. He said, Angle even just finished watching a preseason game against the Cardinals, and I realize it's only three weeks till the season opener. With Lamar setting a contract deadline prior to game one, I'm pretty certain it's not going to happen for him in Baltimore. Here are my reasons why. One, since the price for QBs just keeps going up, it would have been in the Ravens' best interest to have this deal done last year, and they haven't. Number two, Greg Roman's preseason comments on Lamar's improvements, physical, mechanical, passing game potential, etc., always seem to circle back to Lamar's athleticism, running ability, and not his passing prowess or QB IQ. Uh, number three, I think the Ravens' brain trust really believes Lamar's success can be completely attributed to Harbaugh and Giro's run game genius and not Lamar's hard work. Number four, the Ravens don't believe Lamar's playing style will fit well with other teams in the league. Mm. Number five, lastly, Ravens are tight with a buck when it comes to offense. With all that being said, what six, what six teams do you think would have the most interest and the funds to actually sign Lamar to a deal? Sorry for the long question. Love what you're doing with the channel. Appreciate the community you've created and keep up the great work. Now, I appreciate you uh, being here along the ride, man. Um, I really hope it doesn't come to this. Uh, you made a lot of really great points. Um, and and we're going to see, man. We're going to see. I, I've continued to say I don't feel like the Ravens fully believe in Lamar Jackson. Um, but we'll see if they put, they, they continue to say they, they do, but we'll see if they put their money uh, where their mouth is. And Ravens, may, they may have a limit. They may have a limit with Lamar Jackson. They may be like, hey, we're not going past this number. Because that's how it can be in business. The, the, the companies and stuff that, that, that are negotiating with, like, people getting raises and stuff, they may be like, hey, we'll give you this, but we're not giving you that. Take it or leave it. And Ravens could be doing that with Lamar. So, and, and that, hey, it's, it's business. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it, it, I, I'm sure they do have a number in their minds to where they're like, nope, we're not exceeding that. Nope, we're not guaranteeing that much. Nope, we're not doing it. So, we're we going to see what goes down. But as far as what six teams would I, do I think would have the most interest? <laughs> um, Lions, Jets, number one, Dolphins. Dol Dolphins, number one. Uh, Bucks, because... That could be the that could be the your next Lamar. That could be Brady telling him like, "Hey, you're the next quarterback to play for the Bucks." Um, but Dolphins, Bucks, uh, Lions, Jets. Um, man, can I just look down the roster of AFC and NFC teams? Because I feel like it would just be so many. Because um, a lot like a lot of them don't even have their quarterbacks. There are a lot that do have quarterbacks, but there are a lot of teams that just they don't have a quarterback like that. Um, so that he would have a lot of suitors, bottom line. He would have a whole lot of suitors. Um, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to think of every single team division or whatnot. AFC West, I think they pretty much taken care of because they got Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr. Who am I missing? Oh, Justin Herbert. Yeah, so they said over there. AFC North, they, they set. We'll see about Kenny Pickett. Um, but AFC East, Dolphins, there could be one, Bill set, um, Patriots, they got Mac Jones, Ooh, we'll see, we'll see, um, and who else? Oh, the Jets with Zach Wilson, so that, that could be another one. Um, the Texans, that would be another team too, they got Davis Mills, but they're not like overly committed to him or anything like that. Um, the Colts, they got Matt Ryan right now. I don't remember how long he signed Teal, but they got him right now. But that's a, just a little stopgap. The Washington football team got Carson Wentz. Uh, I, they did give him a little raise, but uh, so I mean, it's, it's 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 plenty of stuff out there, and a lot of teams that I didn't even really even think of. I don't want to. I don't feel like going through the whole NFL. But if Lamar became a free agent or if Lamar was on the market, even if he wasn't a free agent, if they was like, hey, we making Lamar available, da 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 he would have plenty of teams lined up, willing and ready uh, to pay him. Next question came from my guy Manuel. He said, shout out from Mexico. After watching the preseason games and then because of YouTube, I watched the comeback against the Colts. Yeah, that shows up for me on my YouTube feed all the time, man. All the time. Now, I love the game. Love the game, but it shows up all the time. But anyway, he said, even though Hobbs let Lamar play Lamar to save us in that game, I saw something different that I've seen uh, this preseason on our defense, pass rush. Uh, there's a big difference between simulating pressure and not getting to the QB, cough, cough, wink, overrated sacks, cough, cough, and Mike McDonald letting players loose on what they do best, getting after the quarterback. I know it's preseason and we haven't seen our starters go on a feast, but last year half of our defense went missing 
uh, before the season. So almost the same players are right are right now in the roster before the 53 man is even set. Uh, I wanted to know your thoughts so far on the defense of Mike, and do you believe that Harvey is getting him ready to hand him over the team after the Super Bowl win? Well, I like how you phrased that, after the Super Bowl win. P.S. I feel Lamar and the Ravens have the deal signed and are just trolling the media for fun's sake. But, I, I mean, they could, but what, what would they gain in that? When you think, what would they gain in trolling the media if they got the deal done already? I, I, I mean, what would happen if, hey, okay, right before we won, oh, we got the deal done, it's signed, it's ready to go. What would they gain from that? But anyway, um, we'll see. We, we, as far as the pass rush, it has been looking uh, a lot better. It's been looking um, just a lot nastier, too. Uh, and that's one of the biggest things with uh, Mike McDonald um, that we hope he continues to do uh, once the season rolls around. And that's just let guys, let pass rushers be pass rushers. Um, pass rushers are not safeties. Pass rushers are not cornerbacks. Just let pass rushers be pass rushers and, and let them get into rhythm and let them feast. Uh, so we'll see how it ends up. It's so far, so good. It is preseason, but it's a good start. And it's nice to have a good start instead of having a bad start. So let's hope it continues to the regular season, too. Next question came from my guy Tyrone. He said, Dan Graven, the only preseason, oh, excuse me, the only person I've been upset with. I was like, man, why are you upset with the preseason? That means football is here. But the only person I've been upset with as far as the Ravens rookies is Kyle Hamilton. Missed tackles last Sunday, the week before that, missed a sack. I don't see much from him, which is sad because he was my favorite pick. Pepe is killing it. Uh, he looks like he wants blood. And don't mention that fumble recovery because we already had that. He jumped in and pulled it from the line, from the line back. What are your thoughts? It's, it's, it's so early. I just, man, I almost feel bad for Kyle Hamilton. I feel like so many people are like, and I know he's a first round pick, so the standards are gonna be high and the expectations are gonna be high, but I feel like so many people are like, like not even necessarily judging him because in football, you, I mean, you judge people. You judge people based off of how they play. But I feel like so many people um, are just, making him out like he's this terrible player or something. Uh, and yeah, yeah, he did have some missed tackles. Yeah, he did have some times where he, he just looked, he looked a little bit lost. He did, he was shook as well. Um, but he also made a couple plays too. Um, and hey, that, that, guess what, that fumble recovery, that counts. Because guess what? If, um, if a, a Ravens player, say for instance it was Lamar, if he, I'm trying to think of some crazy way that he got a touchdown or something, um, but there were other Ravens players involved in it. But if he got the touchdown, that touchdown would have still counted the same way. Um, but hey, same way with Kyle Hamilton. That fumble recovery counted the same way. But anyway, because um, Kyle Hamilton got control of it. But ain't nobody have control of it before then. But with him, it's, it's just patience, man. I did see uh, something somebody sent me that the passes that went in Kyle Hamilton's like area, there, there were no completions. There have been no completions so far. Um, so I was like, oh, okay, I like that. Um, but again, I know everybody gets uh, fixated on the bad stuff. And a lot of times bad stuff can stick out better than the good stuff, depending on what you're talking about. Um, but Kyle Hamilton, I mean, it's, it's, it is so early. It's so early. Like if regular season comes and it's week three or four, I can, and I feel like still that's even a little bit early, but I'll give you that. If it's week like four or five and Kyle Hamilton's still doing a lot of the same stuff. And I mean, again, he's a rookie. He's a rookie. So it, it's a process to this. Every rookie ain't just gonna come on and start killing it from jump. Every rookie ain't just gonna come on and just be on point from jump. Stuff takes time. Um, so I, I, I would just give it time before you really like, all right, this is what Kyle Hamilton is. Cause he's a rookie and it's gonna take time to figure out what type of player he is and what he's good and what he's bad at. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, do you think Ravens should play Isaiah Likely for the third preseason game? Uh, or give him the roster spot for what he's done. Thanks again, fam, and hashtag team keep it clean. Nope, 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 nope. Uh, they shouldn't, in my opinion, they shouldn't have even played him after the first drive. He has proven enough. He, I mean, he already had a roster spot, regardless of if he played in the preseason or not. He had the roster spot already. Um, but he does not need to do another thing in the preseason at all. His preseason should be a wrap. Speaking of Isaiah Likely, next question came from my guy Diego. He said, the most likely way. Now, you know all these little likely puns, they ain't going nowhere. And you know for me, once that season starts, I've been holding back. Once the season starts and he making plays, y'all going to hear from me. 
And y'all, it's gonna be very cringe too. I'm letting you know right now. Anyway, he said, hey, Engraven, been a minute since I submitted a question. Hope everything is going well with the fam. Oh yeah, everything is really good. Appreciate that. I'm gonna keep this one as short as I can. I think the best way for Isaiah Likely to succeed is for him to switch over to wide receiver and play opposite to Rashad Bateman. If the Ravens keep him at tight end, he will always be competing for starting touches due to Mandrews being him. I certainly think Likely is a great route runner for his size. He may lack the speed to play on the outside, but I just feel like he belongs as a wide receiver. Do you think the Ravens will ever switch him to wide receiver? Thanks for always putting out great Ravens content. I'm going to end this question the same way as I always do. Giro got to go. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I don't think he needs to switch to wide receiver for what? Ravens are just moving him over all over the field like I expect him to do. Um, likely is a, a weapon. He, he looks the part. He seems to be the part. And, I mean, he's a weapon. Now, you, you, you did make a really good point. Yeah, he, he will be competing with Mark Andrews for uh, for touches because Mark Andrews is obviously the guy. But Ravens got a such thing as two tight end sets. And Ravens got a such thing as when they like some, excuse me, when they really like somebody, like really like some, and, and he's a tight end, and it's J-Rose offense, he will be on the field and he will be involved. Trust me, he will. He really will. So they'll find a way. And he doesn't, even for him to line up outside, he doesn't have to switch to wide receiver just to line up outside. They can just line him up outside. He'll still be a tight end, still be the same size. Uh, he'll just line up outside. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think he has to make anything like uh, any official changes, anything like that. He'll be used all over the field. Next question came from my boy Augusto. He said, hey, Graven, it's been a long, long time since I sent a question. Hope you and the fam are doing amazingly. Hey, appreciate that. He said, I got two questions. Today, the Ravens are playing the Cardinals. Well, you know when he sent this. He said, that got me thinking of the Cardinals division rivals, the Seahawks. And I got my eyes on a certain individual, Tyler Lockett. Mr. Tyler Lockett knows ball. Despite his age, 29, he still delivers in, in my opinion, he's one of the best and most underrated wide receivers ever. He's a wizard with the ball. The most reliable red zone wide receiver, a nice deep threat. He hasn't had like a serious injury history. Uh, he's got the speed, the hands, the IQ, and the experience. What are your thoughts on the Ravens trading for him? Um, I, I th well, let me finish first. He said, to be honest, I love that to happen. Even though I love the guys we got, Tyler would be such an amazing addition. Not to mention we have an elite receiver for a reasonable price, 10 mil per year. So let me know your thoughts. All right, so with that, um, I wouldn't mind Tyler Lockett. Uh, one of the things that I was just uh, talking to my guy JT about, he brought up a really good point. Uh, when it comes to Lamar Jackson and wide receivers. And it's funny because now that I think about it, this is something that we touched on over the years, why I, I felt like he always would go to Mark Andrews and, um, and, and Hollywood Brown. Because I would always say th those guys, they don't have to stick to the script. It's not like they, they're not like robot receivers to where, all right, we're going to run the route and, all right, hope the ball is there, and then, all right, we're done after that. If, if the ball ain't there and we ran the route already, then we won't know what to do. No, they know how to keep moving. Hey, if stuff breaks down, if Lamar's got to roll out of something, they know how to extend the play and whatnot and, and to keep it moving so Lamar can hit them, whether they strive, whether they come back to the ball, whatever it may be. They know how to keep playing. And what's something that my guy JT was talking about, um, he was like with Lamar, uh, that's, that's the type of receivers that he does better with, the, the ones that don't necessarily stick to the script. Um, so with Tyler Lockett, that has been the case a lot of times with Russell Wilson, because you know the, the Seahawks, they ain't invest in O line like that, because Russell Wilson could scramble. Um, I don't like when teams do that, but anyway, um, their offensive line was always bad, so Russell Wilson always running for his life. So a lot of timing routes and stuff is hard to do that stuff if you ain't got no offensive line. So a lot of big plays that you do, they're going to be broken down plays. So Tyler Lockett was a big part of that for Russell Wilson. So if he came over, uh, then I think he would fit right in with Lamar. Um, and he said, the second question is regarding the undrafted free agent I absolutely love as a player is Kobe McClain. I think he'll make the team and he has a super high ceiling with both his potential and Mike McDonald uh, and Zachary all behind him. Do you think, even if we haven't heard too much about him, that he could have an impact maybe this or next season? Have a blessed, blessed day, man. Uh, no, I don't. Um, simply because we just haven't heard much about him. Unless there's something that I missed, just haven't heard anything at all. Now, Ross, uh, is it Josh Ross? Now, him, I can see him making a team. But McLean, nah, I would say no, not right now. The last question on this episode came from my boy Kevin B. Uh, he says, Stephen Means. Hello, Engraven. Hope all is well. Stephen Means' presser was good to hear. Two things he said that really stood out to me. He said the Ravens resurrected his career, and he was about to call it quits. I think Tony Jefferson said the exact same thing. So we, we got to... 
We got a couple guys that's thinking about hanging it up, but then they got that call from the Ravens, like, hey, what's up, big head? What you doing? Oh, I'm getting ready to retire. No, 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 no. Hold on. Don't do it so fast. But anyway, um, sounds like the Ravens gave him passion to play again. And this sounds like he's having fun playing football again, and that could lead to good things to come. That's true. Because uh, when you're having fun at your job, um, it just, it can make you perform better. Because you're enjoying it. You're like, oh, man, I, I actually like this. So... He said, uh, the other thing he said was he told God he was going to empty the tank and give it all he's got. Hearing that meant a lot to me because he's coming in with positive energy. Oh, that's important. That's important in so many different situations to come in the right way. Because if you come in the right way, you can finish the right way. Um, and, and, but even if you're coming into a situation the right way, that, that puts you off on the right foot. Because if you come into something negative, it, it, it can just, that can mess up everything and make you miss a lot of opportunities too, or whatever it may be. Uh, he said, and that's something we need more of, that positive energy. Uh, Ray used to say, look at the guys around you and let them know you're going to give them everything you got. And at the end of the day, you'll be satisfied with the results because you gave them all that you had. Stephen Means. Peace and blessings to you and everyone else. Let's go Ravens. Oh, and, and O's. He threw in the Orioles too. Yeah, hey, with Stephen Means, it's looking like he's making that roster. That, that's certainly what it's looking like uh, based off of everything the ravens and the presses with them having his presser but even his play it's like it's like it's weird because he's slow he ain't got speed like that but he'd be back there around the quarterback so hey whatever he's doing it's working so he need to keep it up yeah this feels like a dream